Welcome back to Equal IT's Shining the Spotlight series, where we shine the spotlight on incredible initiatives that are working towards driving positive change in the STEM sphere. Welcome, Louise. Thank you so much, Ellie. I'm very happy to have been invited here. You are the co-founder of Girl Coders, and we would love to learn a little bit more about the mission and the goals. So I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I went to chemical engineering. And um, as I was growing up and as I was in university, I didn't have a lot of representation of uh, other females in the engineering field. And uh, I think the issue specifically in, in IT, uh, it, it's still very, very present, even in chemical engineering, it's getting better. Um, so that was part of it, as well as my co-founder, Zoriana Tyshenko, who is also really has a burning passion for equality questions all around the world. Uh, so we happened to meet at, uh, at a company where we both worked. So we decided to start this, um, this coding club. Started at first as a uh, side group of called the Dojo. You know, probably heard of that one. And then we started our very own because we decided we wanted to aim for uh, specifically to provide a space for young girls uh, without any boys would be and, and of course, that's a, it's a very specific type of club. So then we started our own instead. What were some of the other reasons that inspired you to launch Girl Coders? What actually led to launching was I've always enjoyed working with children. And I, I said many people just want to do something good in life. Um, so as we were thinking about, you know, what to do, how to build it up, we were reading up for how to provide, you know, a child-driven learning environment. What is the difference between teaching girls versus boys? Uh, because we, like it or not, there's a difference in how we bring up girls versus boys in Western society today. So uh, we wanted to be able to really fit the whole uh, club to be as good as possible for, for young women and girls. And um, so this uh, opportunity presented itself at this company we were working at at the time. And at the same time, uh, you know, even at that company, it was a consultant company in IT, there were mainly men in the IT section. And uh, I've seen only mainly men in, in the world too. She's a, a young girl, I grew up here in Sweden, so it's uh, generally a very equal country. But still, whenever you call the plumber or you call the IT technician or the electrician, there's usually a man showing up. And it's nothing bad with that. Nobody told me I couldn't. Uh, but you just, you, it just does not occur to you that you could be that too if you see a very typical stereotype repeated again and again. So that is sort of, yeah, the founding stone sort of. You can't be what you can't see, right? What you're saying, it resonates so, so much. And you mentioned that you did quite a lot of research to uncover the type of environments that young girls will need to learn to thrive. Can you share some of the key takeaways from the research that you did? So one of the big things, uh, even fr from the very start, when you create a poster or you try to promote your thing, is to not leave it open-ended apparently and this is this seems to be working quite well actually when when i had to put it to practice so it said that um generally for for a girl it's uh, the fear of failing may trump you know the want to even try it the curiosity so to leave something like let's explore programming uh let's uh, build a giant robot you know it's, it's huge it's, nobody knows when you're done or not done that is not so enticing. And that part, as well as having a lot of jargon, words you don't recognize, um, typical to, for the engineering field, like words for programming languages as such. And of course, the very basic, you know, uh, nicer colors that, you know, young women can identify with more than maybe, you know, the screaming black and green that's otherwise typical. So all of those things led to us uh, trying to uh, frame the whole thing as in s small bite-sized pieces. So to, like you just have to show up. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to, essentially. But we'd be very happy to show you these little programs. Uh, we found a lot of online things mainly. At the start, of course, we had no funding. So we just found fun things online, little Moana games and Frozen-themed games to do block programming. And said, like, you know, you, you just try it. See what you like. Uh, wave your hand about if you need any help. And we 
they told their mentors to always be very excited. Just be there and be excited with the children. I don't know, as adults now, we don't often get that excited, but do you remember when you were really small and you looked in the water maybe and you saw a fish come to the surface, you were like, woo! The, the level of excitement you felt about anything as a child was so much higher. So we're trying to match that uh, in the mentors as well and only try and hire uh, female mentors so that that's the, where the representation comes in. And then we have, not very long, but like two two hours tops, bobs that we had, uh, where you can just you know, explore this. So you try this uh, little project, you can finish that. We have a little bu- building a hardware set now. We've managed to find really good things. So you can build a little project, it takes half an hour. You show it off. You can go and show your mom and dad outside, look what I made. And then you can do something else. Or if you like it, you can continue. So th- these are the little, the, the keystones to make small projects, to be, make it all a good experience, even if it doesn't go that well, so to speak, because that's not the important thing. My Disney nerd right now is getting way too excited hearing Moana frozen in one sentence. And I love that you break it down into bite-sized sessions and you're taking an interesting concept, you know, something relatable for the younger generation and combining that with learning in STEM. It's just great. And so, so impactful. What are some other ways that we can get girls more excited about tech? Perhaps excitement isn't really what is needed. I mean, we we all have to make a choice what to do in life. We're not expecting to be laughing in the office every day, but just to make it feel like something desirable, like, oh yeah, this is quite exciting. It's a pretty comfortable job. Uh, A lot of people can learn this. So it's it's not something just for the smart people, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a learned skill and just to show that uh, it's not just a lot of, you know, old men or men who play video games and they don't want to talk to you who don't play video games you will know what to talk to in the office or in the university and such so i think there's we're probably in a bit of a threshold right now because when there are more women in the field and you see them then you don't need to be specifically excited to go there then it will just be just any other career choice oh do i like uh, programming that much do i like sitting in front of the screen and that would just be more natural. But right now, I think it's it's just representation. And, you know, this low-key representation. You don't have to be a giant poster just meeting a woman in the IT store. For sure, hearing others' journeys as well, knowing that it is obtainable, it is achievable, you can do these things. And there's so many layers to tech. Right? I know for myself, growing up, I thought tech was very much a sitting at the computer, being an expert in science or mathematics. And that's why I never thought it was necessarily for me. But there's so many layers when you pull back tech, so many jobs you can do to thrive and to get involved. So I guess it's about giving more visibility of the possibilities in tech. Definitely, definitely. There is like UX, this front end for the visually minded people. There's, you know, for people who like solving little mysteries or more bite-sized work. And there's, there's just so much that you don't even consider when you, I don't know what age you are in the UK, when you choose your career. But here it's like around 15, you start to really profile yourself. Do you want to go towards tech and science or not? So I think just seeing more what it is. And when you first started Girl Coders, you weren't funded. So this is a real passion of yours. What else makes your heart sing about working on girl coders? I think it's seeing seeing the kids so happy when they, they succeed with something. It, they might seem a little daunted at first, like, oh, this is so scary. Oh, that's a lot of numbers. And then they manage and they, they, they feel so proud and they want to go around and show all the mentors and show their parents. And just having that impact on, on one young girl, it feels like, you know, it makes it feel worth it. Because then she will carry that experience. It's not going to be the most important moment of her life, but it will just add a little brick to the foundation with, of what she experiences and what she thinks of when she thinks tech programming and whatnot. So I think that that's the that's the part for me. I like this little feedback close <laughs> close in time goals short term. That just sounds so so fulfilling. You mentioned some of the bite-sized sessions that you do and could you just break that down? So coming into a workshop, what does that actually look like? What could people expect? 
So w- one of the things we, uh, we do to try and, you know, not scare people away is that you don't have to commit. You don't have to go, you know, nine weeks every Sunday or something. We have uh, after work at the place of work right now. They provide the, the space and the Wi-Fi and the chairs and, you know, everything like that. And also a couple of computers for those who can't bring that. And uh, so then you would just show up. And we start usually with a little bit of a, of a presentation, like every mentor says, hi, have a little PowerPoint to show. These are the different projects we have. So then we have, you know, roam the web to find the, oh yeah, now Minecraft is the big thing. Now Mana is the big thing, you know, and try to link easily in a Google presentation, um, the different uh, little activities you can do. And now that we have also provided, uh, managed to get a little bit of funding, we have some hardware stuff too. Like, you know, a little car that can go around. So at different age levels too, I have a little, one little robot that just walks around singing. And the, the younger girls who chase each other with that one. And we have one that you would, uh, it's actually made up of a little Raspberry Pi that you have to connect and you can program uh, in, in that interface, which is of course not that easy for a seven-year-old, but they, they try. Um, so after we have shown, shown off, you know, this is the things you can do. These are the people that are here. Then we just let them let them go, and of course, you, it can be difficult for the for the little ones, especially the first time. How do you go to a web link? How do you find the presentation? And you know, just typing on the keyboard is a challenge for some of them, and for others, you know, they've been doing this forever, so they have a pad and they're sitting there and they're just you know, running through the levels of uh, of our different little projects. Um, and then usually we have, always have some kids who are. You know, outgoing and some kids who need more, a little bit more coaxing and and support. And the the mentors that we have, they just walk around and you know try and if someone do not ask them a specific question, you just go, "Oh, what you doing?" Or perhaps the the mentors start, you know, uh, building a little science thing or a little uh, one of those little cars. And then usually some of the girls would go, "Ooh, what's that?" Uh, we try to also provide uh, you know hands on. And of course, the cheapest way to do that at the start was to just find old computers, like on Facebook Marketplace or something. And we would always say to the people who would give us, oh, you, what about my data? And I'm like, you know, don't worry about your data. It's not going to be accessible when we're through. So we provide some tools and some protective goggles, and then they just get to go crazy. And, you know, screw out pieces and pull it apart. And they're usually super excited about these things. And when they get bored of one thing, they go move to the other part of the room. And this just, you know, floats and moves on for about an hour and a half. And then at the end, we try to go, and now it's time to show, you know, your parents what you did if you want to. And, you know, just hype it up so that they don't have to leave, you know, mid-project. But you know, something was finished. I got to show people and bring that experience home. That sounds like so much fun. I, I love that you encourage the exploration. Can I come to a workshop? Because I want to start learning. I want to be doing some of these different things. It just sounds so, so exciting and a great overall learning experience. And again, just getting the visibility, the experience of what that could be, what it could look like. Of course, none of this would be possible without yourself, your wonderful co-founder and your incredible mentors. What is the typical time commitment for a mentor to be at Girl Coders? We settled for having these sessions uh, every other Monday, just twice a month. And I hope you can show up usually like maybe once a month at least. We have a pool of mentors and, and they show up when they can. But maybe once a month or every other month and that usually is enough. And of course, if you're interested, you're very welcome to show up every month, every session or, you know, provide your own ideas. Maybe you really like uh, Arduinos. Uh, we have a little Arduino that can sing right now, for example. So it's um, it it. We try to keep it open for mentors too to to provide us. You know, don't have to commit. Doesn't have to be a big thing. Just please show up if you have the time. That's great that you leave it open and there isn't a lot of pressure around it. I know the excitement piece for you is really important when it comes to mentors getting the young girls excited about what they're doing. What other contributing factors? would you say are important to be the right mentor for girl coders? I think it's it's very important that you can that you have a natural way of working with children so that you can, you know, meet them on their level. Because as I said, we have the, you know, outgoing kind, the introverted kind, and 
it, of course, it's not the same kind of person that can bond with, with all of these children. But to be able to, um, I think we have in Swedish uh, uh, saying that you give a little of yourself. So you're not afraid to be funny or silly or maybe a little embarrassing, you know, just so the, the children can relax and relate to you and, you know, uh, be able to ask you the questions, even if they might feel a little stupid, you know, asking the question. Uh, so it's really important that you can just meet the children where they're at. That's, I'd say at least for our age group, which is around, we have some younger ones under 10, like eight, nine, and some older ones sit, you know, usually in the other corner around 12, 13, 14. And the most important thing is to have this connection to children rather than to be very skilled at, uh, at tech. Because especially for the younger ones with the Moana games, with the block programming in Scratch, you can figure that out on the fly as an adult. That's not an issue. The most important thing is that it's a good experience for the child. You mentioned that you work with different age groups. And I'm just curious, have you noticed a difference in the age groups in terms of how they view tech, how they view learning tech? Say for the younger ones, occasionally we have a little sister with a, there who's like four or something. And... At a very young age, it, it's all just a game. It, it doesn't matter, you know, really the color of things or if it's supposed to be for boys or girls, you know, it's a, at the start, it's just all fun. And if it shines or makes a noise, all the better. Uh, but when you get up to ages like 12, 13, it seems like they are a little, as a general rule, a little bit more too uh, afraid to fail. And there's also more afraid to, to try something that they're not sure they're going to be successful at so we might need a little bit more more you know specific coaxing like you know sitting down next to the, the young girl and you're like, oh this thing how what what do you think about this can you see some pattern in this code that you know that might explain why the thingy doesn't sound like it should and, you know if you ask them a specific question like that they're usually very happy to, to you know engage with you and um also, of course, I haven't worked specifically with boys. I don't know if this is a child thing or a girl thing. But to have to not have a blank canvas uh, seems to help a lot too. Uh, to have somewhere to start. Like maybe you have a half-finished little Python program that just asks, hi, what's your name? My name is, and then maybe it says, put face. They're like, oh, no, what happened? That's not what it's supposed to say. How are we going to fix this? And then you find out the code and get to fix that. And that you can do at a very early age which I think, in my experience at least, seems to make them more confident. Like, if I could fix that, I could probably try this thing too. Sort of o opening them up to, to new experiences like that because it seems to be closing down as we grow. Interesting to see the differences. What are you excited about for Girl Coder's future? Our next step, so to speak, is probably to, to reach out a little more. So right now we have, um, it's usually by word of mouth, we try to put up posters everywhere, and but in the end, it's usually somebody came, told their friend, somebody's neighbor. Uh, so since we are both in the tech field and that's where we work, it's uh, parents who are also in the tech field. So it's children who already actually have um, a role model. Of course, having your parent as a role model is not the same thing, you know. And when you get to teenagers, they are all a little dorky and everything, but. Uh, but there are, there are people, you know, young children who are already in a good place to start this journey, you know, to see and to uh, to take in uh, all these things about tech that we try to teach them. So we would really like to reach out to people who do not have that, uh, who might have been in a worse situation or, just, you know, maybe their parents don't work. Like we have a, uh, some areas, risk areas in, in Stockholm nearby here. It's generally with at-risk youth. Um, and we would like to be able to reach out to those places as well and see if anyone could, would be interested to join us both as mentor and as uh, a student. That would be great because you have accessibility for computers, for the folks who maybe don't have access to those at home. Exactly. We got the hardware, so just show up. How else can the community get involved? Can organisations support your great work? I'd say just helping us share this poster. Of course, we, we are not going to grow to a global organization. There are others like that. We, we will not be able to handle more than, you know, 30 kids in one session anyways. Uh, but just, you know, helping out, if, uh, mentioning it to your neighbor or your uh, sister or whoever it might be. 
talk about it so that people start Googling. And I don't want everyone to come to my club specifically, but just, you know, to get, get the idea out there, to get your daughters out there. They might be not, not be very excited the first time. Just bring them there and see if they like it. Give it, give it a chance, so to speak. Give it a chance. I love that, Louise. And what change do you want to see in the industry? I think generally just more diversity would, would be pretty good. There are so many non-females in my industry right now. And I, so I, I'm hoping in, in like maybe 20 years, that people just naturally choose it. We won't be very man is not very woman dependent, you know. Like for the original computers, people are computing things, they were women. And then here we are. And it became famous and well paid. So hoping to go back to that. You know, the likes of Hedy Lamar, Grace Hopper, Ada Lovelace. These are like the original OG trailblazers, right? And we need to be raising the roof more when it comes to the great things that they've done. Exactly. It's been so much fun to shine the spotlight on the great things you're doing at Girl Coders. Thank you very much, Ellie.